Welcome to another episode of the Festival of Enterprise COVID-19 webinar series. I'm David Stevenson, your host, and I'm joined again this morning by Ollie Whittle from Swarm Social. Ollie, thank you for joining us again this morning. No Slightly problems, of course. We got there in the end. <laughs> we did get there in the end. So thanks everyone for, for bearing with us. Um, Ollie is going to be taking us through uh, Facebook and Instagram ads that generate sales part two. And he's going to be showing you sort of a how-to guide uh, in the actual apps themselves uh, or in the, in the programs themselves about how to set up uh, accounts. And is that right, Ollie, and set up pixels? Yeah. So um, last um, seminar we did, we talked about like um, boosting sales during COVID-19 and um, the sort of ad copy um, and ad creative that was working really well at the moment. And on the back of that, I got loads of questions about the sort of nuts and bolts nitty-gritty of setting up an ad so I thought it might be worthwhile to actually share my screen and go through what the techniques I'm using at the moment that are getting sales and share that with people great I think that makes a lot of sense um, yes Marcus is just asking you it's part two there was a there was a, a an initial session that we did with Ollie uh, last week I believe I'm correct in saying um, might have been the week before last my lockdown brain is uh, getting the better of me, but if you look on the Festival of Enterprise um, homepage on Crowdcast, you'll be able to find that. So uh, Ollie is just gonna take a bit of time here to set up because we had a few uh, technical issues. Um, yeah, I think I'm uh, ready. Should I start sharing my screen? Absolutely. Uh, let's see if I don't shut that down. Yeah, okay, so I'm gonna share my screen for... Okay, just so um, hopefully you can see that slide. It's quite a long list of. I'm going to make um, it green so everyone can see. Yeah, different steps. So um, this is basically what I want to um, walk through uh, with people today. Basically, um, some of you might have already run ads, some people may have not, but um, I'm going to sort of briefly go over most of the things and cover um, the steps of doing it from beginning to end um, and hopefully parts of it or, or all of it um, are helpful to, to you. So just to run through the list really quickly, um, and then I'm gonna actually demonstrate how to do this. Um, first thing you wanna do is create a business manager. Um, the link is there for you to be able to do that. That business manager is gonna be the hub of your Facebook page, ad accounts, payments, um, Instagram accounts, all those different um, aspects that bring it into one hub and it's much easier then to run everything from there and also, um, invite partners and add other people if you need to. Um, yeah, going to look about um, creating or connecting um, an ad account. Your pixel, absolutely vital. Um, I would even go so far as to say don't run any ads until you've got that pixel set up um, on your website. Um, creating oh, the ad. Sorry, yep. I don't want to interrupt you, but apparently uh, people are having a little bit of difficulty seeing it. Is there any way you could make it slightly larger and then just scroll through the list? Yeah, sure. Uh, is that so better? Uh, it's still the same. Just is it possible to zoom in on the on the slide and make the content larger? Um, it's filling my screen at the moment. Um, so, um, well, I I can. Uh, I can use the, the the sort of mouse pad to expand oh. it is that in, in Keynote. That's huge now. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully maybe, that's better. Smaller than that. Yeah, that's perfect. So that, that's perfect. I think everyone can probably see that now. Okay, great. Um, yes. <laughs> so we're going to look at it like creating the ad, selecting the objective, because there's different types of traffic, conversions, br um, brand awareness, those types of things. Looking at the targeting, checking your audience, um, launch date, your creative, um, launching, Duplicating those ads, which is number 15, which is a strategy that I'm using at the moment, which is working quite well, and analyzing and scaling um, those results. So I'm going to jump in here and I'm going to share um, another screen with you. Hopefully this all works as it should. Yeah, so um, hopefully you can see that. That's my business manager. Are you able to see that screen? Yes, um, it's a little blurry. Let's, uh, where is my video going? It's not blurry, it's just a bit small. So let me see if I can, why is it not going? 
can I go no, no, that's bigger? No, 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 I think if you go back to the original one, it's just that you were, um, it, it's too big now. If you just go back to normal, I think uh, that should be okay. okay. That's, can everyone see that? that should be. So this is, um, this is my business manager and in here, um, I've got um, the appropriate account. So for this one, it's Elena Claire, which is uh, a shoe e-commerce store and is now slightly pivoted because not many people are buying shoes. So it's more arts and crafts and bakery. Um, but in there, I've also got um, my pages. Um, I've got my ad account connected um, and I've got my payments in here as well. So everything set up within this business manager to be able to run um, ads from it. And then I'm gonna go to my ads manager. Um, this has been created within the business manager and then connected to it so that I can actually run um, successful ads or hope to run successful ads anyway. Um, I'm gonna go to another store. So this is the um, this is the ad account running with the various different ads which have been running um, over the last. Uh, this is actually a new account, so this has only been running um, a couple of weeks, um, but has started to get some decent sales. Um, I think it's got eighty four sales, which is good for the last couple of weeks. Um, before I run those ads, um, I'm going to set up the pixel which hopefully you can see here. Um, Facebook change every day, so I struggle to find it. Um, and here I'm going to check that my pixel is set up, which is going to be on my uh, website. And that is going to allow me to track sales that take place in uh, my website through my Facebook ads and also allow me to retarget people that have come onto my website and not made a purchase. Without the pixel, I won't be able to track results um, and I won't be able to target people. So um, once this is already set up for me, um, but if you're looking to um, set it up for yourself, then you need to be, um, that's gone back to there. Um, you need to set up, go into setting up your pixel and then you can share that with your developer or um, something like Shopify, you literally just copy and paste the code um, onto your Shopify website where you go onto the um, dashboard, then you go to online store um, and then you go to uh, preferences uh, and then it'll allow you to um, plug it in. Um, on something like WooCommerce, you have um, you have a plugin which just automatically plugs into your website and the pixel should run from there. Um, right. So I'm gonna go to the ad account again. Um, and I'm gonna look at trying to set up uh, the best possible ad I can at the moment. So we've got everything running. We've got our business manager running. We've got everything connected. We've got the pixel on our website so that we're gonna be able to track things. And now we're actually looking at creating an ad. So um, let's look at doing that now. Hopefully it's not too slow. So we've got these different objectives. Um, ultimately, we want to get sales. So, um, you know, lots of people do this different ways. This is how the way I do it. And this is the way it's worked for me in the past. But I always um, optimize for conversion because I've got that pixel installed now. So it's going to be able to track the sales when I send traffic to the website. Um, and that means that, that means that I can optimize for actions that people take on my website, like making a purchase, adding to cart, view content, leads, um, functionality like that. And I'm always going to want to optimize for purchase, which will be here. Um, and that's telling Facebook that I want to serve traffic to people who they know historically make purchases from adverts on Facebook, from Facebook on people's um, e-commerce stores. Now, 
there's good um, pluses and minuses to that. Pluses, obviously, you are um, serving your ad to the best, to the strongest audience who um, Facebook knows make purchases. The downside to that is it's normally one of the most expensive ways um, to serve an ad because they're such a high quality, hot audience. Um, but that's worth paying um, the extra cost for. So as you can see at the moment, I haven't done any targeting. And if you look over at potential reach, I've got 44 million people, which is effectively uh, the number of people in the UK who are on Facebook. So at the moment, I'm targeting the entire population. Now, custom audience, I'll come back to in a second, but like, let's do the sort of cold audience stuff. So at the moment, um, I'm targeting people in the UK. Um, I'm going to do um, an ad for um, some of the winter shoes, for instance, that we ran over the winter um, that was targeting women. Um, and we were targeting, and we knew this from testing, that it was 45 and over um, that got the best results. And you can see over here that um, it's already dropped to 9.2 million, which is still too big generally to start a, an advert with when you're targeting the UK. If you're unsure of your audience, run it to um, everyone um, and then filter through the results and see what age groups are purchasing. Sometimes you'll be surprised. And Facebook's getting to the point now where it's so strong that it can optimize your ads um, in the best way possible um, and delivers it to the best audience that they think are gonna get results. I would only suggest that you filter by age if you're absolutely sure um, that no other age groups will make a purchase. I always untick this one. Um, it's a bit like the boost button. Facebook wants to serve it to as many people as they can um, and spend your budget quicker. So we're only gonna allow it to target people that we, we select. So as I said, we're looking at those winter boots um, to target. Um, and we are going to target possibly something like Hunter Boots, which are Wellingtons as another brand, um, which are like the ones we sell, we look at here and the potential reach is 45,000, that's too low. So I'm gonna click here and it's gonna give me suggestions on other targeting that I can do. And um, Boots, which is more generic, um, is probably gonna be a better targeting option. And you can see that's jumped to like 350,000. Um, hiking Boots probably um, 420. And we're starting to get closer to where we wanna be, I think around uh, 500,000 um, is a good mark, a million is a good mark. Um, anything below 200,000 um, doesn't give Facebook the chance to optimize um, as best as it, as best it can. Um, and also for each ad at the moment, I'm only gonna target one interest because if we target more than one interest, we don't actually know which ones are working. So it could be one of three um, and that makes it difficult. So, I'm also going to allow it to run on um, automatic placements. In the past, um, I have selected, for instance, only mobile devices here, um, and I've told it to only go to Facebook and on its um, newsfeed. That's really expensive way to do it. And as I say, Facebook is good enough at the moment to be able to serve that ad to who it thinks is the best audience to convert. So at the moment, I've just got my targeting set up. I'm doing women, 45 and over, people who are interested in boots. And when I say interested in boots, that means that they have uh, liked a Facebook page. They've talked about um, boots on one of the Facebook owned platforms, whether that be Instagram, Facebook, or WhatsApp, um, or uh, cheekily, or um, you've been browsing on the internet whilst your Facebook's open for boots, um, or lastly, possibly that you've been talking about it and they're, um, they've got you there tracking you through your microphone. They deny that, but it seems all too coincidental when these ads appear. So at the moment we've got the targeting, we know who we're going to serve that to. Um, and then we want to look at the creative, which is really important as well, because this is the um, aspect that is going to uh, draw their attention. So here we've selected our page um, and our Instagram page that that's going to go to. Um, now here, if you have a video, that is the um, best case scenario in terms of 
uh, the most effective creative that's going to get you sales and get you interest. Um, video um, is the most engaging. Facebook actually gives more priority um, to video because users engage with it and they always want to see engagement. Um, and these can be about a minute long um, with a quick description and introduction to your product. Within the first few seconds, you should people should be understanding what you do, why it's, uh, what its benefits are, how it can help you. Um, and also it should have subtitles as well because normally um, people are traveling or they're looking on their phone with their volume off. So they read the subtitles instead of um, listening to the music. Um, Carousel was always, also a very um, successful one because you can um, post individual pictures of your product and then send people um, to that product page um, so they're then high converters. So at the moment, we're going to add um, a video which is um, already pre prepared. Um, so, like here, um, this is a minute long. I'm also going to go in um, because it's actually very important. This is 45 seconds long, so I. Um, I'm actually going to go in and change a couple of things where I went on to edit video. The thumbnail is really important because it's the first thing people see as they're scrolling through their feed. These are my thumbnail options. Um, I've actually tested this um, and this this was the this was the best one. Uh, this was actually sorry. This is the best image because people got to sort, see the product um, immediately. And then um, we're looking at some primary text. So basically here, um, in my experience, you want longer text for more unknown brands. And also um, if you're introducing a new product, you kind of want to describe what that does. Um, and you want to um, grab people's attentions. It's only people like Nike, for instance, that can run a one line or a two line primary text and still gets people's attention because they've already bought into the brand. Whereas possibly, you know, you're still trying to um, create brand awareness. Um, so longer text is helpful. And in there, you want to list your um, benefits and your USPs almost straight away. So, you know, I would talk about um, uh, waterproof uh, winter boots. Um, Hopefully that's, and I'm actually going to put in a couple of other USPs. These are lightweight. Um, okay, so I've kind of in my first line got three um, key USPs: waterproof, lightweight, comfortable, winter boots. So people understand almost immediately what that is. Um, and then I'm going to add a couple of things in here, like um, the perfect winter boots for um, walking your dog um, days out with the family, because bearing in mind I've targeted people, uh, women 45 over, so I'm assuming um, they're family related. Um, or, or let's say winter holidays. Um, so I've in the top line, I've demonstrated the USPs in the second line. Um, I've demonstrated what they could be used for. Um, and then I'm also going to um, say some sort of key factors like um, free shipping and money back guarantee. Um, which works very well. People get, people are more confident uh, making a purchase. Um, and then I'm also going to add like pep this up a little bit and add some some emojis, for instance. Um, trying to find an appropriate one here. Uh, um, okay, there we go. Holidays. <laughs> um, and I'll add some other emojis in there as well. And then for the headline. Um, I'm going to repeat what the key feature is. This is the way I do it personally. The key feature um, from the primary text. So um, I'm going to take this, um, put it in here. 
I'm going to make it a bit shorter because I want it to stay um, on one line when the preview shows in here in a second. Um, and then I'm going to add one of the USPs here, free shipping, um, which people like to see. And then I'm going to drop people onto the product page, um, not the not the website homepage. I'm going to drop people straight onto the product page. So um, this particular boot will have its different variations of sizes and color on the product page. Um, people are going to go straight there um, rather than hoping that they'll navigate from the homepage to the product page and eventually find it. People don't have the patience or the time to do that. Um, I'm going to drop them on there. Um, and that product page is almost going to be a sales funnel landing page style. It's going to have all the trust badges and people are going to feel comfortable making a purchase. And then I am going to um, select shop now. Um, and you can obviously select one that's appropriate to you. So learn more has, um, which is here. Learn more at the top has the highest click through rate, but shop now has the best um, conversion rate. So obviously we want to make, we want people to make a purchase. Um, and then that is my ad ready to go. What I'm going to then do is um, go back to as manager. I'm sorry, I'm racing through this really quickly, um, but I really want to demonstrate how to set up an ad um, because that was the main question last time. Um, and I'm hoping maybe you might have to go over it um, or your brain's working really fast. So. Um, <laughs> well, we can rewind then, again at the end. So, uh, if everyone wants to see it again, the, the content will be available to rewatch at a more slow pace. Uh, like yeah. After the uh, after the session is over, guys. So what I've done here is um, I've got a campaign running, and where I said to you that I was targeting by single interest, um, I've then got lots of different ad sets in here which are single interests. So this I talked about was um, a, a crafts equipment uh, that we're selling at the moment instead of the shoes. Um, and we are targeting single interests like uh, sewing, knitting, wool, yarn. Um, we've also found associated interests like fine art, uh, cross stitch, even Audi, AGK. Um, these are all recommendations made by uh, Facebook, if you look at audience insights, which is uh, here, it will, uh, if you type in one interest, then it will make some suggestions on others. Um, so if I've got the initial ad that I launched up that we walked through, I'm going to duplicate that ad um, to as many times as your budget will allow or that you want to test and then keep adding single interest into those new ad sets to be able to test different things. So we can see here that some um, interests are working better than others. Um, some, you know, some have got double here. So yarns getting more sales um, than any of the others, but something like um, something like knitting, for instance, um, sorry, actually knitting is getting more sales as well. It's much, much lower cost per purchase. So it's costing me less to get that purchase. And then when I'm hitting five purchases, I'm then increasing the daily budget here. So all of these started with five pounds. If you can see down this budget column, some of them haven't hit five. So I've let them, um, just waiting for them to run. Um, and then those that have hit five or then gone on to hit 10, I've increased the daily budget here so that the ad is being served to more people who have that interest. Um, and it's still within my targeted cost per purchase, which is under 20 pounds. So within 20 pounds, I'm still making a profit on the product that I'm selling. So anything over 20 pounds, which you can see down here and on the left hand side, I've turned them all off 
because they've started to creep over my um, my targeted cost per purchase. So, and then from there on in my campaigns, I create lots of other uh, different ads with different targeting, um, different size audiences. Um, and then I start looking at uh, lookalike audiences, which is people who have made a purchase um, and are like, are like those um, that have made a purchase and also retargeting. And that is done in the, um, that is done here in the uh, custom audiences, which we said we were going to come back to, which I just remembered. Um, and let's go there quickly. Hopefully this loads. So an audience is here. Um, come on, hopefully it's quicker. Yeah, okay. So in custom audience is here, I'm going to say, um, now I've got lots of different audiences that I've set up. So for instance, here, here's a retargeting one. This is people who have visited the website in the last 180 days, but not made a purchase. I'm going to serve another ad to them saying, thanks for visiting the website. Um, you know, here's a 10% code or, you know, can we help any further? Here's a lookalike audience of um, that video that I showed you. Um, and that is uh, over the last 365 days, if people watched over 50% of that video, um, I've created a lookalike audience. So they are 1% similar to those people who watched the original video. So these guys actually haven't watched the video but they're very similar to people who have, and I've asked Facebook to serve this ad to them. So this is where, once you've done your targeted ads to a cold audience, you then start creating retargeting and lookalike ads, um, which are the strongest ads, but you need to have accumulated enough data for that. Um, I think in a nutshell, that is um, pretty much how to, how to create an ad very, very quickly. Sure. Um, and hopefully, hopefully it's of some help. I'm sorry if it was so quick, um, but. Uh, no, no, thanks for taking everyone through that. I mean, I have done it myself and I know that it is a fairly uh, Byzantine process, I have to say, it's, it's, not, it's not easy. Um, so if you are trying it on your own, um, you know, go back and, and watch this video again. But, um, you know, you may want to enlist the help of someone like Ollie to help you navigate what is not an easy, I have to say, it's not easy. I've done it myself, it's tricky. Yeah, and um, to be honest with you, the, um, Facebook are trying to make it as easy as possible for small businesses to set up ads. But the whole actual initial setup of the business manager and installing the pixel is a real pain. Um, and it doesn't make it any easier. And also, Facebook's kind of all over the place at the moment in terms of its actual algorithm. So you know, it's, um, it, it's, you've got to use different tactics to what you normally use. Um, I do have a link whereby I'm happy to, um, let me just, uh, get that link for you. I'm happy to look at anyone's, uh, Facebook ads for them, um, and give some recommendations in terms of, um, just looking at their website or the actual ads that they're running. Um, and I'll put that link in the chat here. Um, and hopefully that can offer some help to some people. Great, that's that's kind of all. I mean, I think th th we're getting a few questions here that touch on the same thing. Lee and Warren are asking about about your services. So if you're running a campaign on behalf of a client, how do you charge? Can you explain how your service? I think you know people may want to engage the help of someone who is more has more prowess at this kind of thing because it is tricky, and you're obviously spending money, so you want it to have an impact. Um, so. Uh, how do you charge for your services? Um, so I tend to charge um, a fixed monthly retainer um, and then I charge um, a commission on sales so that basically it's performance related and I scale with um, clients. So, you know, um, a client fortunately has done very well. Um, it is home decor, so it's suited to what's going on at the moment, but they've um, doubled their sales month on month since um, February um and you know that's 
that's all performance related, which the client's much happier about because if they're doing well, then they're much happier to to work together. But yeah, yeah for anyone, if people have more questions, like um, I put the link there, but there's also like contact details as well. So great, and it was, um, but that's uh, not the purpose of this. Obviously, it was more to help people rather than. No, I think that's true. But I think that you know the, the reality is is a tricky process, and I'm sure a lot of people will be contemplating obviously doing it themselves. But equally, you know. When you are spending money you do want it to have an impact because i've spent money on facebook ads and generated you know just money down the toilet on for because it wasn't done in an effective manner so because it is so complicated if you're not using effective strategies to do it you know you can allocate yeah. pounds and it's just you just waste 500 pounds you don't get any click through yeah. the actual conversion and so that i think can discourage some people and i think because it is so complicated i personally would have liked to have used someone who could have helped me when I did try that, it, it, it you know, it, it's, it's a very complicated process. And I, you know, Ollie, I think, um, is a lovely chap. So if you guys are looking for someone to help, I think, uh, in, in a difficult world of Facebook ads to navigate, he is, uh, he's a guy that you should consider. So, um, we, we have quite a few questions. Do you have time to sort of go through some of them? Yeah. 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 I'm really happy to answer them to help people. Sure. Great. Um, here's a question from Chris, and I know you have a, a view on this, uh, wondering about the difference between Facebook boost and ads. Yeah, definitely. So, um, Facebook boost, I would, uh, try and avoid, to be honest. Um, basically, um, it has very limited functionality. Um, it's, it's a bit of a cheeky way, I think, from Facebook to, um, take people's money and say that they're advertising on their behalf. Um, whereas in the ads manager itself that I just showed you, you've got a lot but um, more that you can do in terms of the targeting, the lookalike audiences, the retargeting that I showed you, um, the different creative formats. So within that also, you can also split test different creatives against each other. Um, it does get complicated, but um, it's a much better, um, you know, um, investment of your money in advertising. So I would avoid boost and try and work with the ads manager. Great. Thanks, Holly. Um, we have a question here from Sean, uh, relating to something that you spoke about early on in the, in the, in the session about keywords, uh, and wondering whether like on Google ads, you can set up negative keywords. So I, if you're looking, if you want, if you're working with boots, you may not want to attract people looking for work boots, for instance. Yeah. So, um, where, um, I did the targeting and we did the drop down for like hunter boots and boots and stuff like that. There's a little, there's a button under that blue button that says exclude people. Um, and you can exclude, um, terms. Um, you can exclude people who have already purchased on your website. You can exclude keywords like you mentioned. So yeah, that's, that functionality is there and you can exclude people. Great. Thanks. Holly. Um, Jose is asking, is there a way to know what the CPM cost per thousand impressions bid recommendation for your campaign is? The bid recommendation, um, I mean, CPM is a tricky one because um, CPMs are all over the place um, uh, and very product dependent. Um, at the moment, they're very, very low. So it's not costing you a lot to serve to, um, you know, a thousand people, for instance. Um, because there's so many people on the um, platform itself at the moment. So I'm seeing CPMs at like below um, five pounds, which is quite low, but um, typically I would say CPMs below 10 pounds is a good target, generally, rule of thumb. Okay, great. Um, I, I, we have a question here about LinkedIn. I know that you do primarily Facebook and, and, and sort of Instagram. Do you, do you also work in LinkedIn? If someone wanted to contact you about that? I've done a few, I've done a few ads, um, but not as many. It's a lot, lot, lot more expensive. So, yeah. you know, you're looking at five to 10 times more expensive to get a click or, you know, any, any of those kind of actions. Interesting. Great. Um, we have a question here from Peter. It's something you did speak to last time a little bit about, but it, it, asking about how uh how a business should go about setting a, a rationale for a budget and spend okay so in terms of the rationale um i think that um so the minimum you want to set for a daily budget really is five pounds a day so you multiply that over 30 days um but also you know you're an absolute wizard if you set up one ad 
sorry, and that converts. So you probably want to be running various ads at one time um, to be able to see which ones are converting. And like I showed you my campaigns, like there's still many that I'm turning off and on um, the whole time. I would say that you probably want to be looking um, at about, I'd say a thousand pounds a month um, is probably the average. Um, I do work with people who spend less. Um, the um, I would say by spending less, it takes you much longer to test. Um, you get much slower results, obviously, because you're spending less. But a thousand pounds a month tends to be a bit of a sweet spot in terms of giving you enough leverage um, to test and also expand on those ads that are working um, and then build up. Great. So, um, yes, yeah, so that, that sounds um, like a good idea. I know that I didn't do that and it didn't work. <laughs> um, do you have any other tips for setting up Facebook ad for our consultative search? So we have a question from James about uh, tips about setting up Facebook ads for a consultative software company that doesn't have e-commerce, but they still want to drive traffic to their website. Okay, so I would then, where we were talked about the pixel and that we were um, optimizing that for um, purchases, we could also um, optimize it for a lead. So it sounds like you'd probably want to be able to speak to a business who's interested in your services and you drop them onto um, a landing page or your contact form if it's got enough information that people would trust it and want to fill it out. Um, and you optimize for a lead. And when someone fills out that form, that triggers that a lead has been completed. In terms of the actual targeting itself, you can target by um, job titles um, and interests. Um, with interests, I'd be slightly careful because you want to make sure that you're um, targeting the right people. With job titles, you've probably got um, a bit of a, uh, you've got a stronger audience, but probably a smaller audience, but hopefully those are well targeted. Um, and then as you're going on and running those ads, you want to check those ads are performing. So um, with the job titles that you've targeted and with the keywords that you might have used, are people clicking through from your ad to your website? Um, how much is your cost per click? What's your click through rate? Um, and by understanding those types of things, you'll understand whether the ad itself is resonating with the audience that you're serving the ad to. Um, and hopefully those marry up and you're getting a cheap cost per service and action taken on your website. So it's just a matter of, um, yeah, testing that and analyzing it really. So hopefully that helps. <laughs> Great. Um, thanks, Ollie. Um, we have a question here from uh, Knightsbridge Neckwear, whose sales are mostly to the wedding and scooter boy market. Uh, and with both audiences largely unavailable currently, they want to retarget their ads or retarget to try and find new audiences. Um, so some of the things you described earlier there it can you can sort of target new audiences I mean I suppose it's a question how do you how do you do that is it a b testing and sort of trying to develop a new audience yeah so um was the question they'd like to retarget their audience yeah, yeah. So, so I'm assuming by retargeting that they've already had the traffic that have um come onto their website and basically they want to serve them a follow-up ad so uh, no their, their their audience has disappeared because of the wedding market has been um you know, cancelled effectively, um, and the scooter boy market. I'm not entirely sure what that is, but it, I think that they are not are also not able to operate. So they're trying to find a new audience that was previously unknown to them. Okay, so um, there's a couple of things that I probably recommend. Then um, one is that um, they try new audiences in the actual you know the targeting that's available to them. So whereas they might be um, targeting people who are engaged. Um, they might target um, people of a certain age who are interested in certain um, competitors or magazines that relate to them. Um, in terms of actually generating sales, then they might look at um, doing some vouchers um, instead of actually direct sales at the moment. Um, I luckily um, have a Facebook representative um, at Facebook and he says that vouchers are actually 100% refundable vouchers are doing really, really well at the moment because people are still want to make purchases. They just don't want to put a date on it. Um, so yeah, if you're able to set up a voucher, um, it's even recommended by Facebook, which is a pretty strong recommendation. Yeah, fair enough. Thank you. 
Um, we have a comment here, it's not really a question, but something I'd like to sort of expand on a little. Laura Matthews, you know, saying a thousand pounds per month for a small business is, is very high. And yeah. I mean, I think it, it does seem high, obviously, to if you're a small business and, you know, cash flow is tight, but generating growth and sales in, in the current market, in, in the world we live in where there's so much noise, it's, it's tricky. And if you don't have a, I mean, I had this experience personally, if you don't have the right you know, you don't have enough money to, to advertise effectively, then yeah. you're not going to get the results, unfortunately. I, I've seen that personally. Yeah, and I totally understand that. And I think um, when I was talking about the thousand pounds, I was, you know, kind of talking about the perfect scenario, really, um, because that gives you all the abilities to do the different functionality and almost get to um, good results as quickly as possible. You know, as I mentioned as well, um, I do work with companies who are spending less and obviously their turnover is um, lower um, and their sort of testing is slower, which is absolutely fine. Um, you know, you've got to weigh up, weigh up the pros and cons. And remember in all of this, like at any time, if you're started um, and it's really not working very well and you can see that those stats um, are not as positive as you want them to be, you can turn it off. So you're not committing to £1,000 a month or however much it is a month. But what I would say is, you know, set that budget up in your mind um, and also be reasonable about how many sales you're going to get. So if you decide that you're going to invest £500, for instance, you know, you can't expect hundreds of sales because your cost per purchase is going to eat into that. Um, so it'd be worth understanding what your need to have as a cost per purchase um, to be profitable to run ads, how many sales you want to generate, and then work out what budget you're comfortable um, and how many sales that's likely to equate to. Um, so kind of reverse engineer it that way, um, rather than over expecting results from a smaller budget, if, if that makes sense. So the, um, the example I showed you was the sewing um, equipment, and that is 20 pounds um, cost per purchase or under um, to make profit. So with that, spending 100 pounds a day, for instance, I can only really realistically expect five sales. Um, so it's working that out and being realistic and then appreciating whether the ads are actually working or not. Um, but again, if it's not, you can turn it off like instantly. Um, so you're not committed to anything. And, and is, is, is reverse engineering that number something that you work, you help uh, clients sort of with before they determine what their ad spend is, I'm trying to find the right yeah. yeah, definitely. because. Ultimately, you know, we want the ads to be a success. So we have to come to an agreement before the ads even start of, okay, what's, you know, what is your targeted cost per acquisition that is going to generate a profit? Once we understand that, then the ads like I showed in my campaign again can be shut off or scaled up depending if they're over or above that, uh, under that. <laughs> so yeah, definitely something that is agreed on before um, any ads are started. Great. Thanks, Ollie. Um, we have a question here from Oyen about uh, your thoughts on Eventbrite pixels. Is it, an, is it effective to tracking audiences? Don't know what that is. Um, yeah, uh, yes, I haven't used the Eventbrite pixel for um, a while, actually. Um, but uh, at the time, I was having some problems with it. Um, I think that it wasn't integrating correctly um, or accurately. Um, I would imagine that that's fixed or updated by now. Um, but, um, so yes and no, I've had experience. It wasn't, um, the best experience, but I would imagine hopefully it's better now. Okay. So, sorry, not a great answer, but. Not sure. Thank you. Um, we have a, one, another question here from Susan, uh, who's setting up a new online business starting, it started selling through eBay. And they're in the process of setting up a WordPress WooCommerce website. And they're wondering if there's a way to gain the eBay audience watchers and direct them to our new website. Is that something you have any expertise in? Yeah. Um, I mean, I've done similar. I've set up eBay stores and then tried to die and then try to, um, I, off the top of my head, um, it's against eBay's policies to put, your web link in your eBay um, product description. So um, I don't think you can do it from eBay to your website. 
because the product listing will just be rejected if there's a web link in there. So, um, sorry, off the top of my head, I can't think of anything where you could divert your traffic. What you could do, actually, sorry, quick thought, is um, those reviews that are on your eBay store, um, you can either import them or you could display them on your website so that you've already got testimonials and positive reviews, which will be a massive um, sales converter when you're um, selling on your website. So if you can pull those through or, demonstrate or um, display them, then that would be a massive positive. But in terms of actually directing traffic from eBay to your own store, I don't think so. Okay, thanks, Ollie. Well, um, it's it's been an incredibly helpful session. I think, uh, yeah, if anyone wants to, you know, rewatch that how to how to generate an ad yourself, uh, this this uh, session will be available for replay immediately after we finish here, and then you can just you know pause it and, and go through each section slowly and and sort of see what uh, what what the things to do are. But if you want to get in touch with Ollie uh, at Swarm Social, the email is is Ollie at swarm swarmsocial.co.uk. Is that right, Ollie? Yeah, so um, I I've got a resource page here, which basically will hopefully you can see that. Um, so that's the link to the free audit. This is for the business manager. Facebook are actually offering grants at the moment. They've got a hundred million dollars to small businesses. Um, I'm not sure of the criteria yet because it hasn't been opened up to the UK. Um, and this last link here is. Um, how businesses can respond to COVID-19 um, and that's their recommendations by Facebook. So hopefully that might be of some use to you. Great. Well, that's been, uh, that's very helpful. And, um, you know, it, it is a complicated process. So it's, uh, it does require some patience um, from my experience. <laughs> or if you do decide that you want to sort of take a more, um, you know, yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I, to be fair as well, I've done that at super speed, like gone through the ads. I don't even launch ads that quickly myself, <laughs> so I've done it really quickly. Um, I normally take a lot more time to set up an ad. Um, so obviously, we're but, really our time here. Uh, but everyone really appreciates your time this morning, Ollie, um, taking us through that. Uh, it was very helpful, very informative, and uh, yeah, I'll share that bitly link now. It's um, HTTPS. Um, so, you know, if you are finding that you are wanting to increase your ad effectiveness, you can always reach out to Ollie and 3DPXQ7M. Um, yeah, and if people if people are just getting stuck, like setting up that ad, you know, as I said, it was very quickly. It was very quick. Just send me an email, and like, you know, I'm happy just to help people in terms of you know, hit this button, don't hit this button, think about this targeting, um, just send me an email. Um, and yeah, I'll, I'm happy just to help people as well. That's really kind of you all. It's, you know, it's, it is tricky stuff, this stuff, but it can be very effective if it's done, if it's done properly. So um, have a, have a play around everyone and see if you can, uh, you know, get it, get it to work effectively for you. And uh, you can always reach out to Swarm Social if, uh, if you want to sort of take it to the next level. So Ollie, as always, a pleasure having you on. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Sorry about the sound, everyone, at the beginning. Uh, we are uh, we were experiencing minor technical difficulties, but we overcame that. And I hope everyone has an amazing weekend. And we yeah. look forward to you again in, uh, on another episode. Thank you. Thank you for everyone's time. Have a good weekend. Take care, everyone. See you. Bye.